Avatar Tack 2. I ain't getting copyright claim for that, no. <laughs> okay. So, last time I did this, told you guys uh, I blamed bad emulation for one part. That was not bad emulation, that was just bad execution on my end. I looked into it a little more with the uh, speedrun community for this game, and they uh, they gave me a couple tips on it. But so far, from the few days I've been gone, this <laughs> this is what I've done so far. I haven't done anything past what we saw on the stream. I've just been mastering what what pieces I know. Dang it. Sometimes I can't get that. There we go. It's a short slide from manager to, well, not manager. Vacuuming up manager. Dang it. Didn't get that one either. My bad. I'll get it. Don't worry. There we go. A manager is always prepared. I got that canyon skip. I've been getting it. This is a job for a manager. Okay. This is what I have problems with is one or two framing. No, but I didn't get it either. I even when slowing it down, I didn't get it. Mr. Krabs had no legs because of the shading. And bad compression aside, uh, that's you're about to see. Hey, hey buddy, come on, wake up. Ugh, I have this down. I got the I get that every time now. This. Has been the biggest pain in my ass over these past few days. I I got it. Wow, I actually got it that time. Okay. Getting that though was the problem too. May he rest in peace. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. No swimming just after eating. I can get that down. And I got that. Then you gotta go back there to get the oh, chocolate creek text. Then of course I don't have creek skip because I did it. That's. Oh shit! No! You fuck! Oh well. At least now I gotta wait. Witness this beautiful man while we wait. <laughs> it's me out here eating ass. <laughs> I'm horrible. Oh, god damn, I'm horrible. Now I just gotta one frame this goofy goober token. Damn it. One frame too late. But that is what I've gotten so far. So, let us watch what he has, uh, the great purple foundation has for us next. You should be able to ledge grab by here. I practiced this and forced myself to get him multiple times in a row. 
So you should probably do that too. So this is what it will look like if you were doing it in any percent. The enemies would be in the way, we just move a bit to the left. So that's what it would look like in a run. Me after eating ass, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> and now for the damage boost, regardless of the method that you use, you will want to do this damage boost in the exact same way. So come over to by here specifically, pass this line by here, because it'll update your position. Otherwise, if you jump by here and jump into, into the chocolate, the game will not update your position and it will kill you. So come over here and also make sure that you have either two health or three health because the damage boost will knock off one health. So after you set your checkpoint, you're going to walk around by here and then hold A to extend your jump so that you get damage boosted higher. You want to hold A and then get damage boosted like that and you'll see that Patrick like got stuck on the button. When that happens, you want to hold left while or tap it a couple times while holding A for the second jump. So it'll look like this. So this is what it looks like when you do it back to back. That's why I apologize. Patrick's damage animation. Or you can double out is jumping to heat. Because if you're too feet of these two have been after the cutscene ends, you normally would go to the creek. However, if you wanna attempt the token one frame animation skip, you actually have to walk back a bit to get this. Because then it'll unlock the task in the menu, and that is the only way that you can one or two frame the token. But whichever way, you're gonna come up to here, and then you're gonna do this marshmallow cycle over here. The cycle is completely off for me, and it probably will be completely off for you as well. But it is just a thing of just taking whatever path that you can see and thinking about these cylinders that can hit you. It's pretty basic. So I don't really need to go into detail about it. So now I'm going to attempt the one frame by walking into it slowly. And I actually missed it. That was the two frame. If you pause and then the token counter does not increase by one and then you unpause and then Patrick's already doing the token animation, that means it was the two frame. Regardless of whether or not you get the one frame or the two frame or if you just collected the token normally, you are now going to warp to up Chocolate Creek. So when you warp to up Chocolate Creek, you warp to about by here. If you do not like the creek skip I showed you, then you're just going to follow this path anyway. Just don't do creek skip, and you'll just come along this path anyway. But you'll hit the spawner along the way because it gives you a bunch of manliness points. Alright, so when we go past this bridge... Okay. Let's do that. From what I can see, I may have gotten the two frame on that. I don't know. Because it, it's hard to tell until after you get it. We'll do what he did, though. Get the manly points. Huh. How do I get that? Oh, okay. Okay, now to where he was talking about. It'll initiate a cutscene, and then we'll have to talk to Mindy. There is a thing that can happen called Mindy Steer, which is when sometimes you'll press B to cancel Mindy's text box, and Mindy will just stare at you for an extra couple seconds for no real reason. Or at least that's originally what we thought. Now we have a theory on why it works. We think that if you press B on the first frame of the text box or other specific frames then you will get Mindy Steer. So just wait a tiny bit before cancelling Mindy's text box. So this is what it should look like. <laughs> so that actually got me Mindy Steer. So that wasted a couple seconds. So it is a little random, I think. But just don't skip the text box instantly. If you get Mindy Stim multiple times in a row, then you probably want to reset your console because it'll probably just keep happening, or at least that's the theory. But either way, it's only a couple seconds. And if you didn't do Creek, then you will not have enough for Cartwheel, which is the move that I'm using right now. However, if you did do Creek, then you will have enough for Cartwheel. But even if you don't have enough, then you're just going to come along this path anyway. And now you can either go on... Alrighty, let's try that now. Okay. There we go, I didn't get it. So we'll go along here. 
The an out of an ounce of bounce challenge, huh? Okay. Now what? Mr. Krabs having a good time with himself. On this trampoline and then get the token casually. Or you can do this, which saves like half a second. So you jump up to here. Jump up to here and ledge grab. Go around the side by here. And then jump into the center of this trampoline so you can two frame this token. So if you did creek skip already, then you're going to warp to the very first token. Otherwise, you're going to warp back or walk back, depending on if you got the token two frame or not. You're going to go back to Mindy and press R, and then you'll get the cartwheel ability. And then in that case, you would warp to up Chocolate Creek. So if you already did Creek Skip, you do not need to worry about this. But otherwise, I'm just going to very quickly show you what it looks like. So it'd be kind of the same thing, except you cartwheel off and double jump. Makes that part a million times easier. And then after getting the token for up Chocolate Creek, you would just warp back to the first token. Alrighty, so let's try that. Shouldn't be too hard. What the fudge? I ain't getting it. Let's go back and check. So getting and press R, depending on if you got the token. Otherwise, you creek skip already into the skia. Jump up to here and ledge grab. Go around the side by here and then jump in. Okay. I'm trying to ledge grab. Whoop, shit. Whoop, can't, guess I can't do it now. I'll still try to two-frame it. Nope, didn't get it. Oh, well. I couldn't see. Alright. Into the stump. Well, I'd wreck all. That was kind of a fucking two. Well, you're gonna cop me. I'm gonna stand on. Except you cartwheel off and double jump. Makes that part a million times easier. And then after getting the token for up Chocolate Creek, you would just walk back to the first token. So you'll walk back to about by here. And now there are a couple ways that you can do this. You can either stand on this cone. You can stand on this cone. Or you can go and do the popcorn stand. I'm going to show the popcorn stand first because it's easier. But the objective basically is to get up to this balcony. So popcorn stand is very easy. You're just going to jump up. Well, you're going to cartwheel and jump off like that. And then to get the ledge grab skip, you're going to basically take what you know from the first balcony jump and apply it here with Patrick's arms going downwards. You can even just accept the ledge grab if you just want to be as safe as possible. The other way is kind of inconsistent. I'm not even totally sure how to do the third cone, but you would basically... Okay, that's how you do it. It's... Probably harder than the fourth cone, but you can try both if you want. Okay, so for the method where you jump on this fourth cone by here, you're going to line up Patrick's head with a black line, like this. And then you would go into cartwheel for a tiny bit, press A, and then hold A for the second jump. And then you should get the perfect amount of height, so it'll look like this. That was kind of a bad example, but I can just do it again. And then, if you've done it perfectly, you should be able to skip the ledge grab every time as well. So that time, I started jumping too early. But, what I'd recommend, again, is not holding A for the first jump, but holding it for the second jump. And then, if you did it perfectly, you can jump up to either by here or by here. And if you did popcorn stand, you'd be about by here. Whichever way, you're going to cartwheel double jump over to this part by here. Okay. So we're going to try that. We'll try the easy one first. Oh, almost got it. Almost got it again. I 
I lodged grab, that's fine. What's up, losers? There we go. Okay, I got that down pretty well. Now let's try this one. Oh god, let's try this one. I don't even know how I'm supposed to get that. Yeah, we're not even gonna worry about that for now. That ain't worth it. Fuck your tables. Screw it. I'll take that. Okay. Then he said you need to popcorn stand you'd be about back here. Whichever way, you're gonna cartwheel double jump over to this pop. Okay. There we go. About right here. So the final jump is kinda hard to explain. Um, it's really easy on Xbox 360, like it's nearly free, but on original Xbox is actually pretty hard. So you're gonna need to line up your camera perfectly if you're on original Xbox, kinda like this. And then you're gonna walk into this part of the wall. If you go like this, you'll slide off. So you wanna have it lined up like this. And especially because on original Xbox, to get this trick as consistently as possible, you need a perfect camera angle. So you're gonna have it lined up like this, and you're gonna do two full jumps and hold A for both of them, like this. And then Patrick's arms will flail downwards if you got it. Like that. Again, on Xbox 360, it's a lot easier, so there's a lot more leniency. But I guess the collision isn't as bad on Xbox, so it's a lot more precise. But yeah, remember, have this angle. Don't have this angle. Don't have this angle. Do it like this, and try it a couple times. And if you missed it, it might be because you didn't space your jumps out properly, but it might also be because the camera angle is bad. So in which case, try and readjust the camera, and then go for it again. And then when Patrick's arms flow downwards, you just do another double jump, and you'll go by here, and then you just walk into the token. Now, something I should say is that you may have seen... Alright, let's try that. There we go. That ain't too hard. Yeah, that's not too difficult. Whoop! Nope. Yeah, that ain't too bad. And as long as you don't have it, as long as I don't have it too far to the right. Alrighty. Now, what else? ...that we one-framed the no-cheese token. It is one of the only end-level tokens you can actually one-frame it. So the only ones you can actually one-frame are no-cheese, Dennis, and Dennis 2. Well, you can actually two-frame those two, but yeah, those are the only ones where you can one-frame or two-frame the main objective and warp to the next level. So for all these other end-level tokens, you cannot do that, so you're just gonna jump into the token. Okay, so this is the first driving level of the run. With the other route before Mindy Skip existed, we used to- Alrighty, just walk into it. Still trying to get the one- <laughs> no, can't get the one for him. <laughs> oh my god. I forgot about this. And our yellow knucklehead McSpazitron shows up to accuse Mr. Crab of being a horrible person. King Neptune sacks Mr. Krabs 
That one from the movie. That was. That one in the movie, jackass. Please, please show the. No, no, they didn't show the intense face. Hang on, hang on, I'm gonna look that up. Hang on. Don't let the paddy wagon take too much damage, or you'll have to start again. Okay, hang on. I'm trying to find the one photo. I wish they hadn't shown the patty patty wagon. I wish they'd shown this. <laughs> I wish that had been in the images. <laughs> oh god damn. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go to the bathroom after that. Oh, hang on. Oh, we'll be right back to your regularly scheduled program. Holy shit. Oh. Oh, I almost forgot. Time to take a pee. Oh, I, I was too late on it. <laughs> okay. Now, let's go back to, uh, what, did you, what this guy's gonna talk about. Oh, no, don't look at me recommendations. I don't watch Critical. <laughs> Just have to do seven tokens, uh, four of them being from here, but now we do five, and they're all the same except we don't do these two tokens by here. So the worst segment in the run is cut down from like nine minutes to about three minutes. But anyway, there are also a couple things to explain. Um, as I said in the beginning, PAL is slower by about 15 seconds total in any percent because of the driving. Another thing as well is that it's believed that original Xbox and Xbox 360 have different driving speeds. But I think the difference between them is very small. So you will not lose much time to driving. And again, on 360, the loads are faster anyway. So it about breaks even. Even. And now there's one more thing that I want to explain, but I needed to actually activate first. So that text box, the collect nitros text box, sandwich crash is a thing that can occur if you see that text box twice before restarting the console. Let's say I messed up in this level and I had to reset. If I saw that text box again, the game would crash and I'd have to restart the Xbox. That is really inconvenient. However, there is one or actually two ways to avoid it. The first one is to play on the German version. For some reason, the German version just cannot get sandwich crash. However, again, the German version is the PAL version and the PAL version is slower. And the second one actually loses about four seconds total if you're gonna do it in both of the sandwich drivings you just need to remember so at the beginning you're gonna hug the right side of the wall by here and then you should avoid the the nitro text box you would have to do that in both of the driving tokens that would lose about three to four seconds in any percent but if you really don't want to restart your console then that's how you avoid it Otherwise, you got to restart your console every time you see it. And I'm just going to mention this because the community didn't know this until weeks ago. On original Xbox, you can actually soft reset the console by holding uh, the select button and the stop button at the same time for three seconds. And on Xbox 360, you just go to the home menu and then you get brought back to the dashboard and then you restart the game. So those are the two fastest ways.
years on Xbox 360 and original Xbox to restart your game to avoid sandwich crash. But anyway, we're just gonna do the restless level normally now, and we are gonna nitro in specific places to save time. Nitro management is very important. You almost always want to pick up nitros if you see them, because it's even faster than the paddy wagon's top speed. So the first nitro is gonna be used by here. And then just follow the path that I'm taking for a while. Another thing as well is that you don't want to do take your turns too hard or else you'll lose too much speed. So do it like a kind of soft turn like I did just then. Don't do a really hard turn or else you'll lose time. And you want to do that for a lot of the corners because then you're not losing as much speed, if any at all. So the second place we use nitros now is coming up in a second. So you collect that second nitro. And then you want to nitro across this park. You don't have to take the turn, like, the exact way that I did it. You can cut out less of the grass if that's easier for you. Okay, so now you want to take this right path. The left path is actually slower, believe it or not. We know Alright, that's about enough information to take in. Here we go. Our journey begins. Hang on, hang on. Ready. That's how you nitro. Okay, right trigger. Let's try what he did. Well, I messed that one up. <laughs> I'll get better at it, don't worry. Okay. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. You guys alright? Over there? You don't look too good. Okay, taking the right path. Now. Never ever take the left path. And then he's gonna hold on to your nitros for a while. Okay, so now you wanna take this path. And remember, don't take too tightly of corners, so... Just go around like that. And then for this water section, just inch away across and then as soon as you pick up this nitro just nitro across like that uses your free nitros by here and then nitro across this because i believe it saves frames and then for this last cycle there'll be a wrecking ball you want to hope it's not in the way otherwise you might want to slow down so you're just going to go around like this and then as you turn the corner by here nitro and then nitro across here and then you're done with the level, basically. So now at this point, you should have five tokens and. Okay. Oh shit, I accidentally nitroed. Oh well. Didn't mean to, my bad. Did you say take this? I don't know. Well, yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. So Trying to remember everything he was doing.
Whoa, that was close. With the chaos of Bikini Bottom behind us, SpongeBob and Patrick begin their long journey towards Shell City. However, with SpongeBob gone, all is not well. Plankton is now selling the Krabby Patty at the Chum Bucket, and with every purchase, customers are getting a mind controlling bucket helmet. Squidward has discovered Plankton's plan to create an army of bucket heads. Will Squidward save the day? No. <laughs> On the outskirts of town, SpongeBob and Patrick meet some of the charming locals who tell them they will not last long outside the city, but our friends do not listen. They should have listened. Our heroes are now stranded in a vast desert with only their feet for transportation. Oh boy. Here we go. Plankton is using those radio towers to broadcast his evil messages across the sea. SpongeBob, you have to find a way to shut those towers down. You those rates. Okay. Entering this level, and that's very important because we need five tokens for the bash ability. And this will allow us to do new tech called bash boosting. So bash boosting is when you're damage boosted and you hold Y during the damage boost and then SpongeBob will bash in the air. It'll basically buffer a bash, so it'll look like this. So hold Y now, and then you can do that. Um, you don't want to mash Y, you don't want to press it, you want to hold it. Especially because holding Y makes you um, bash higher anyway. So again, it'll look like this. And we're going to use this tech a bunch of times throughout the run. But what you want to do, you want to jump up to bike here and just bash this and walk across. Skip the cutscene, and then we're going to do our first bash boost. So come up to bike here, line it up kind of like this, and then do a double jump spin. Okay. Sup, my dudes? Man, this game has not aged well. So come up to by here, line it up kind of like this, and then do a double jump spin, and then hold Y, and then jump, and then you'll land up to about by here. You don't have to spin, but I find it to be easier and faster. But then you're gonna. Okay. Oh shoot. Well, messed that up. Oh well, we'll get in. <laughs> I'm not feeling like a game of catch right now. Ow. Ow. Fish case. Okay. What did you do for that again? Let me check. Jump and now like this, and then do a double jump spin, and then hold Y, and then jump. Okay. See if I can get that. Whoops. My bad. See if I can get that. Almost got it. Yeah. And then you'll land up to about by here. You don't have to spin, but I find it to be easier and faster. But then you're gonna walk across by here, jump down, 
And now there are a couple ways that you can do this next pop, so I'm actually going to kill the Spurs just to get them out of the way so I can show a clearer. So there are three ways to do this. The first one is just... Let us get there first. Obviously. Where's the other boy at? Oh, there he is. I'm gonna kill this guy so I have a clearer path. That's my favorite line ever. Just to go around casually like that. The second one is to double jump spin over to by here, and then jump up to by here, and then jump across. This is a few seconds slower, but it, you might find it way easier than doing the bash boost. And the third way to do it is with the bash boost. So have your camera kind of lined up like this. And then do a double jump spin. And then hold Y. And then you'll make it across like that. That is the fastest way to do it. So something that I forgot earlier that is actually important to bring up is the existence of Cacti Glitch. Cacti Glitch is when, let's say you go to do a, a double jump bash boost into Cacti and you mess up and you die. Sometimes, not always, but sometimes when you go back to do it again, you'll get this weird thing called Cacti Glitch, where it won't push you in any direction, right? Like, you'll just be stuck in the Cacti, pretty much. So this is what it'll look like. So you'll just stay in place sometimes. If you stand still and you have extra health, you, like, the Bash Boost might actually work the second time. So sometimes it'll just randomly fix itself. Sometimes you need to die again for it to fix itself. Sometimes you have to reload for it to fix itself. So it's a bit of a mess. It's kind of random. But yeah, I thought it was important to mention that. Okay, so for this next trick, there were also kind of I boost my stay in play. Where it's the sun boost into cat earlier. And then okay. and do a double jump spin. And then hold Y. And then you'll make it a... Okay. Why did you choose this game to speed run? Um, I have a lot of good memories with this game, and Super Mario Bros. 3 was way too fucking hard for me. <laughs> Not for a starting game. Okay. Piss off, boys. And then do a double jump spin, and then hold Y, and then you'll make it across. I got I got to hold in a certain direction. That's why it's not doing it. Okay. I got it. So there we go. Swing. I like Super Mario World more. Yeah, Mario 3 is hard, you're right. Uh, I, I, I like them both. If I had to pick one, I'd pick 3. Because, I mean, World is good. I mean, World is amazing as a game. But 3 added so much more to, to Mario than World did. Like, one of the main things World only did was add Yoshi and stuff. Everything else, Mario 3 basically covered. There we go. That's not too hard to get. It's like that. That is the fastest way to do it. So something that I forgot earlier, that is direction, right? Like, you'll just have sometimes you need to die again for it to fix itself. Sometimes 
was important to mention that. Okay, so for this next trick, there were also three ways to do it, and I'm gonna show the easiest way, which loses a second. Stand a bit in front of this flower and press Y, and you'll see the SpongeBob kind of flails downwards a little bit, like Patrick does with Balcony Jump. That means that you can now jump. So you just jump across like that, and that loses a second. And now, you can either do right gang or left gang. That is what we call it in the community. I'm not exactly sure how to do left gang, and in my opinion, it's way harder. You kind of, like, hold the stick back and then hold it, like, up left. So you hold back and then hold up left like that. But I find right gang to be easier, so I'm going to show you right gang. So you jump up to about by here. Don't let yourself, like, slip off like this. You just jump up to by here. And then, for the first jump, hold A, and when you're at peak height like this, you are going to then hold right, like that, just directly right. And then you should get it every single time, it's 100% consistent. You can also do left gang if you want, but I find it to be more difficult. But whichever way, they're both roughly about the same amount of time anyway. But yeah, it's about a second faster than doing this flower method. And now you're going to do another bash boost. Okay. There we go. Ain't too hard. Try it again. Every frickin' day. Alright, that's that. Boost. You can either manip the banjo guy or hope that you get good RNG and don't have to. I'm gonna show them in there. Hang on one second. So you let him slam once and then kind of like move back a bit. So he slams you in the wrong place and then kind of like move and don't all right i think that's enough info to take in for one day i'm gonna call it a stream and continue with my day um also i forgot to say thanks i i don't know if i thanked them ahead of time but thanks to you seen it oh four and ultimate demon pool x for following but aside from that thanks to everybody who came to the stream I'll see you guys next time. Take care.